Hello, my name is Mike Roslog, and I am the product director for Rad Studio and Delphi C++ Builder and Delphi Prism. Today's quick hit video is really around a couple of more things in the editor, and I'm going to show you a couple of things like how to use the surround commands, how to use live templates, and also how to use some more refactoring. So let's get back into it. So let's go ahead and open up that same project that we've been doing so far. This time what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and add another button to it, and let's go ahead and add another button. And I also want to go ahead and add two labels to this. So I'm going to drop one label down and we're going to open this up fairly far. I'm going to spread this out just a little bit farther and then we're going to add another label into here and we'll drop label three right into here and we're going to just leave them label one and label uh, three for right now because we really don't need to do anything special at this point. We're just going to go ahead and keep it like that. Now the next thing I want to do is go into the source code uh, of my button because I want to do a couple of things. So let's say that I wanted to report on a for loop and I wanted to execute a for loop. So how would I do that? Well, there's a couple of ways. I, one way is I could you know just start writing out a for loop. The other way is I could start using a live template. Now, if if you're not familiar with live templates what you can do is you can come up here to view and say templates inside of here and what that'll show you is all of the different templates that are set up for you inside of the product now uh, you can use the templates that way or when you're in the source code you can just come into your where you're at and you can hit control J and control J is going to bring up all of the templates that are available to you then you can start typing in so I want a for loop in here and I want a for B because I want to begin and end uh, with it also so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter now the thing you'll notice if you watch some of the other videos that I've done around sync edit this automatically brings me into the sync edit mode because I can then change the letter I I can change the increment and I can also do the last count. Now what I want to do with this is I'm going to highlight this whole thing and I'm just going to say let's count to 100. Simple enough. So then inside of here I'm going to then say x colon equals you know i basically. And then down below, I'm going to want to put a, you know, put a label out. Now notice when I hit enter on that, it automatically added the i into my process but now I still have my X inside of here it's still it still says that I have an X and there's my integer that it, that was defined now the next thing I want to do is I want to come into here and I want to put a something like a label uh, two dot caption and then I want to say colon equals and then I want to say value of I is and then I'm going to go ahead and end that out and then I'm going to put a plus and then I'm going to say string or into string and we're going to say I and then I'm going to put a plus on the end of this and I'm going to put a space in here and I'm going to say value of X is and then we'll put a space and then I'll put a plus and then we'll say int to string and then we'll put an X inside of here like so and then if we wanted to we could also come into here and we'll just leave it as this right now and so a couple of things now I still have a, a problem with X as you can see X still isn't defined so I could come into here right mouse click on it highlight it first so I've got the X highlighted as you can see right mouse click on it and then go into refactoring I want to declare a variable in this process so I'm going to come up here to declare a variable notice it comes up with the letter X and integer and I'm going to say OK notice it defined my integer and everything is good to go from there now let's say that I wanted to kind of surround my my for loop with a try catch or try finally in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my four down to the end right here and now what I want to do is I want to surround this okay to do that I can right mouse click inside of my inside of the environment and come down here to surround and you'll notice that you have a couple of these things that's for the surround structure and what I want to do is I want to do a try finally or a try F when I click that it's automatically going to put a wrap that code that I just did with that code. Now what I also want to do is on this label I'm going to put this into the finally method so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and cut that out and we'll come back into here and I'm going to put that inside of my finally method like so and then I'm going to also put another one in here and I'm going to say at the end of this so we can come into here like so and then I'm going to say in 
finally, and then I'm going to say end method. Okay. So now we have the two areas that it could print out, and then I want it on uh, label three for the end method. So I put in two labels. We had label one, label three. We what we've done is we've used some refactoring in there. We've actually used the uh, code template that actually put the letter I in there for us from the for loop. So we're doing a couple of things in here. Now when we run this, it's going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to run it. And it's going to come up, and when we hit our enter, you'll notice that the, in the finally, the value is 101, and the number is 100, and at the end method, it's 100. But again, same thing. Most likely, what I would do in the real world is that I would, of course, get rid of this last one. Now, of course, I just held down the control slash and that uh, commented out that line for me. I'm sure you already knew about that. Now, the next thing that I want to also just bring up and just really quickly highlight in this quick demo is the fact that where are these templates located and can you build them yourself? So if we come into view and we would come down to the file manager, uh, we can come into here or the file browser, excuse me, notice it comes up in here into my structure and I, I can pull this out if I so desire so you can see it a little bit better. So there's the file manager and what I want to do is I want to come into program files and I'm on Windows 7 here and I'm going to come into the program files and we're going to go into Embarcadero and then I'm going to go into Rad Studio 7 and then I'm going to go into my object repository. I'm going to open that up. I want to go into the English or to the language that you're specifically thinking about. So if you're in Japan, you would pick, of course, the Japan layout. I'm going to open this up and you'll see inside of here that we have the code templates. When I open that up, you'll see that we have code templates for C, Delphi, HTML, and XML. I want to go into Delphi right now and you'll see that there is my four that we were looking at before. If I go ahead, I can open this uh, inside Rad Studio if I so desire. So I'm just going to pull this back over here and we'll put this back down at the bottom like that so it's inside of here for us. And then this is what the template looks like when you do this. Now, one of the things that I plan on doing in the future is I will go over how to build these templates and uh, some more documentation around templates of how you can get the most out of them because they're really, really powerful. But as you can see, you can see that this is uh, basically the template. It tells you all the hints. It tells you how things are supposed to work, how the uh, language is supposed to work on enter, when you're supposed to validate, all of those things inside of there. So again, very easy what we did today was just go out there we we used the code template to go out there and generate some code we then did a surround we then did a declare variable using a refactoring we then ran our method and we looked at the differences between finally and end and uh, we then used the comment structure to do the control slash to comment out a line and then we did the uh, review of how to use the file browser inside of the environment Hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully you learned a couple of uh, quick methods off there. Thanks again for listening. More to come. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.